From the state of Arizona, Dennis O'Connell, Rocky Taylor, and Chris Wilson. And at the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring, referee Joey Chavez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, six rounds of boxing scheduled in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he wears white with orange. He scaled 126 and one quarter pounds. His professional record, nine victories, two defeats, one draw, with five wins coming by way of knockout. Presentando de Lomas del Paraíso, Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. Alexis Picuro Molina. Molina. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears black with gold trim. He scaled and ready 127 and one quarter pounds. His professional record thus far perfect. Six fights, six victories, with two of them coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Moreno Valley, California. The undefeated Albert Chop Chop Gonzalez. Gonzalez. This looks good, this looks good. We cover the rules in the dressing room, but as a reminder, watch your heads, keep the punches up, touch gloves now, and back to your corners. So we're set for our next contest between Albert Gonzalez and Alexis Molina, six rounds in the featherweight division as we can look at our first in a, a parade of Robert Garcia trained fighters here tonight, of course, concluding with our main event a little bit later on, featuring Bam Rodriguez. Robert Gonzalez obviously had the luxury of training alongside Bam, but also alongside Arturo Cardenas, who we'll see a little bit later on here on Before the Bell. And that in particular, Sergio, has given him a little bit of an advantage in this fight because Cardenas has sparred with Alexis Molina extensively, so he was actually able to show him their sparring footage, and the uh, the Garcias had a, uh, a sly grin on their face when they told us that. Now, you know, that's part of boxing, man. It, it, it's such a small world, and, you know, you're bound to fight and spar, uh, you know, similar fighters, and there's going to always be tales of the gym. So, yeah, it's a small world, and you're always going to get the inside scoop, the spies in gyms. Right here you see Chop Chop Gonzalez, who's a... He, he's actually going to have to get on the inside, break the distance of Molina, who has almost a five-inch reach. So you're going to look for patience, upper body movement, move his head, and, uh, you know, look look to pick apart. Pick your shots because it's a taller Molina. Chop Chop Gonzalez is very much someone who's learning on the job a little bit, still just 21 years of age, but had long sabbaticals in his amateur career, didn't fight at all from the age of 11 to 16. Then he and his father took a trip to Las Vegas and was messing around in the gym a little bit. And his father told him, hey, we're going to enter you into a, an upcoming tournament just to scare people by putting yourself on the on the bout sheet. And he started losing some weight, started feeling sharp in the gym, entered the tournament after not fighting at all for five years and won the Golden Gloves in Mesquite. So clearly someone, Sergio, with a lot of natural talent that he could tap into. It sounds eerily familiar. That's exactly how my uh, career started. You know, I, I, I was off and on trips to Vegas and little by little entered the Golden Gloves, won that and realized I had, I had a future in this. You see Gonzalez trying to set up the overhand right, which he landed on Molina, the taller Molina. Those are the punches you want to set up, you know, with, with jabs to the body and then upstairs, and he's doing just that. So Molina struggling a little bit with the hand speed of Albert Gonzalez here in the early going. Nice counter uppercut there with the left hand. Yeah, no, and not only that, but the, 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 the smart punch selection by Gonzalez is coming from under. You know, taller fighters are accustomed for the looping shots, but under with uppercuts, that's surprising. And if you notice, uh, Gonzalez is not really throwing that many shots. You know, he's pot shotting. He's not throwing many jabs. I'm saying, even though he throws two right there. You know, he, he can't really go jab for jab for Molina since he has almost a five-inch reach advantage. So he has to pick his spots of when to throw the jab. But he only wants to throw it when he when he's in a position. Gonzalez, at least at this point, picking off those jabs. Staying responsible with that high guard. Now back on his left hand and a nice right hand right at the bell. The 
gonna, that's how you pick your shots, you know. Long jab for Molina, dip, come up with an uppercut. Nice shots right there. Most of them didn't land, but you gotta give credit to Molina. That's pretty good wiry upper body movement for a tall fighter. But little by little, you start chopping them down like Gonzalez's nickname indicates, and that's exactly his fighting style. He adapts and then attacks. No urgency in the, in the corner of, of uh, Gonzalez. You know, they, they know they're gonna break their fighter down little by little, it'll come to them. Round two underway. Excellent opening round for Chop Chop Gonzalez. She's coming off a six round decision win over Juan Hernandez in early October. Staying very active. And in order to stay active, Sergio, most of the cards that Gonzalez has been fighting on in the San Bernardino area and in the surrounding region, you're familiar with this concept. It's basically been shows where whoever sells the most tickets gets the main event slot, and the popularity of Gonzalez has been growing, and he's been getting those main event slots. Yeah, I mean, those are ballroom shows that they're gonna give you, they're gonna give you that main slot if you prove to be a ticket seller. You know, that's how you come up. A lot of fighters have that, uh, that same route, but if you carry that, that momentum and keep that undefeated streak, you, you have a nice fan base to the big stage. Good body work here from Gonzalez a moment ago. Lena trying to mix it up a little bit more, but gets touched with an uppercut on the inside, and that's something we saw out of him in that Angel Garcia fight on the Kiyaguchi Bermudez undercard. He got hit with a lot of uppercuts, and Sergio, after the fourth round, Molina was just gassed. I mean, that was a stoppage that was just based on exhaustion, it seemed. Yeah, it's because when you're dealing with tall fighters and they're missing shots like that with people with a good upper body movement, that takes the legs of a taller fighter. And if you see what Gonzalez is doing, you know, he's trying to get the upper body movement to land those overhand shots right there. But Molina is game. He likes to fight on the inside for being such a tall fighter with a tall reach. He's a tough guy as well. The right now he's getting hit by the tougher guy and the tougher puncher. Landed a couple of nice left hooks, but the majority of the work coming from Chop Chop Gonzalez was just overwhelming Molina with hand speed and again the accuracy and punch placement that you've been pointing out. Yeah, but this is a this is a good matchup, good step from Gonzalez. Molina, Molina's no joke. He came to win. I mean, he's taking shots like that. You don't want to take too many of those. It's a good body shot there by Gonzalez. Uh, but yeah, it's a good good testing to see what you got with your young prospect. This like, looks like the type of sparring that you see in the Robert Garcia gym. This is something that Gonzalez does every day, and that's the kind of shot that they teach in that gym, and Molina is rising in pain on the canvas. He is not rising in pain. That was a Mexican liver shot. He's down for the count. He ain't getting up. Chop, chop with the final gash to the body. What a performance from Albert Gonzalez. And that's how you keep on the winning streak, keep being a fan-friendly fighter, and keep knocking them out. Who's next? A big step up for Albert Gonzalez, and that is a big performance for the 21-year-old from Paris, California. And that is a flash of power from Chop Chop that we hadn't seen a lot of, at least to this point. Just two knockouts coming into this fight, but you can see the hand speed, the punch placement, even if he isn't gifted with concussive power, Sergio, when, when you have that kind of speed and accuracy, you can make knockouts happen. You actually become a better fighter. You evolve into a better fighter when you don't have that power. So it's a good thing that he doesn't have that one, one punch power, you know? So he's developing and evolving into a complete fighter. And that's the reason Robert Garcia in his, in his corner right here, they didn't have any urgency. They knew that the momentum was going their way.